Hi. <laughs> so, uh, grand day to you whenever you may watch. And thank you. I have about 100 subscribers. What? Thank you for subscribing and sharing and watching. And much well wishes to you, your family, your children, your land around you, and your critters. Right? So, uh, I'm not really sure where this video is going to go, but I definitely want to share some stuff. So recently, um, just on my own, I recently got a book called The Atlas of the Bible, which is really interesting because a lot of information has come around that probably, uh, we, the United States and the Americas are actually where a lot of these things came from and I'll see and I've seen a lot of relation to places that are here that are also in this uh the Atlas of the Bible um so it's gonna kind of range around a few things like between witches women and places in the Bible names certain names so I'll start with that first the names that I've found some interesting correlations to that are in this atlas. So one of them is, <clears throat> for example, there is a Mount Tabor or Tabor Mountain in the Atlas of the Bible. And there's actually a Mount Tabor in Portland, Oregon. And then it talks about uh, Carmel and there is a Carmel, California. And then it talks about a lot of the valleys and rivers in uh, this atlas. And you can relate that also to the valleys and rivers, specifically the Colorado River and the Grand Canyon. And in this picture, in this book, which was published in 1957, which I really like because I'm noticing that things that are older that aren't as in popular publication now have information in them that you may not find in some more recent publications of certain books. So in this, I recognize that there's a lot of reference to the Egyptians, a lot of reference to Ishtar, um, a lot of reference to the Sumerians. So one of the other things I put together is like Semitic and I'm going to talk a little bit about language because it does talk about language in that book. Um, when we say Semitic uh, Jews, it would be like saying Orthodox Christians. And I'm wondering if, well, I'm not even wondering. I think that there's a connection between uh, Sumeria and Semitic. And what it describes in this book is the language. So as we know, the original Hebrew language didn't have vowels. It was all consonants. And we recognize that even with like the Egyptian language. Um, it was based on hieroglyphs and such. And the sounds that would come through are being translated by predominantly men who are going off of what information that they've had from, from their teachers, okay? And it was saying that the Greek Jews translated as much as they could of the original language by putting vowels where there may not have been vowels, like when we say Yahweh. Um, that was... Even the Y wouldn't really fit in there. It would be something that was added so that the language could be understood. And even some of the names, one of them was like Ezekiel or Azale. And, and I might even be misquoting that. I don't have the book out here with me. Um, and Moab. There's Moab, Utah, and then there's Moab Valley in this book. And what was one of the other ones? Oh, this is very important. 
and I kind of messed this up. I anyhow, that doesn't matter. So there was a place called Biblos. And this is where Egyptians would come to get wood and trade the papyrus. What was the papyrus made out of? I guess out of fibers from what was grown in the in the valley of um, Egypt. But in here, it basically, this was a meeting place where Egyptians would trade the papyrus for certain uh, woods, particularly cedar. And that reminds me of like the, the great cedars of Yosemite. Okay. So the reason why we got the word Bible is because when you would write something on the papyrus in this specific place called Biblos, those pieces of papyrus were called like Bible, by Biblos, a writing of sorts on this papyrus that was traded in this town called Biblos. So the name Bible comes from Biblos. Now, from what I've learned from the Sibylia book and just from basic kind of research is that we know that women are the birth, they're the birth, they who, they are the ones who give birth. And so through giving birth would be the first teachers and many of things like even syllabus comes from sibyls and spelling comes from the idea of being spelled. And, um, when it comes to the writings and the ancient writings, I had this is where I'm going to kind of float into the witch thing. I had realized like the Inquisition wasn't about f convincing people to change their religion. It was more about like finding people who already weren't part of the religion. And then um, the Inquisition and the Crusades kind of go together, right? So the Crusades were like going around the world and spreading the word of Christianity. Well, this is where we get the word like pagan and heathen. And uh, if, if I haven't said it on here uh, in some of my earlier videos, I will just remind people that there is an Indian group in the United States called the Pagan. And I actually believe that that is the word that got switched into pagan because many indigenous people are considered, you know, pagans. Uh, non-believers when that is not really the case they're just more into nature and the earth which makes sense because that's what they're surviving off of and then heathen comes from the word heath which is a plant that grows it's a bush and even the name heather comes from the flower that blooms off of this heath plant so those who lived in the country around this heath plant were called heathens so these are just names that have been manipulated. So with the Inquisition and with the Crusades, it was more about basically punishing those who did not believe in the way that these, um, I would say, um, holy people or religious people believed. And... I had this theory that really what was happening is they were inquisiting about certain um, knowledge and then basically keeping it and then destroying the person who actually gave that knowledge. So I like to, you know, watch videos about different deities and that type of thing. And I had watched a video about Themis. I think that was her name. Themis who is a female goddess of justice and she's considered like Lady Justice and she's related to Anput slash Anubis. And also I kind of see her as like, um, we have the Statue of Liberty, right? Where she's holding a book and then scales 
or no, she's holding a book and then a torch. And in this, the picture is she's holding uh, a rod and uh, scales. I'm just trying to get to a position where you can see my face better. There. So, after that, this video popped up called The History of Witches. I cannot believe it. <laughs> it's true. So, the Inquisition and the Crusades were predominantly... Um, hunting women and what we now see today as how uh we have oh that reminds me we have these names for women so jezebel i actually think comes from there is actually a town called Jeze jeziel jeziel uh in this book the atlas of the bible and my guess is that there were women there that probably had a lot of knowledge and um we know that sex and um prayer and quote unquote ritual can bring about certain manifestations so it is highly possible that the women there were very knowledgeable and this is where the name jezebel came from because then they just demonized it some of the other things I learned, not through that video specifically, but um, harems. If you don't know what a harem is, it's basically like a man of what a harem is described as is like a group of women that would be um, kind of like subjects or a servants to certain men of power. Solomon had about a thousand women in his harem. And this is also the same person who created the keys of Solomon to say, lock in demons, right? Lock them away, lock them into hell, so to speak. And I've always had this theory that really the demons are not demons because if we look at the word demi, demi or demands right they are very similar and demi or diva is is you could say like a demigod like they say half god or you say a diva and that's usually attributed to a woman of high status well according to this book there is not a lot of information before the 1800s as to the writings of the Bible before what we now know as the Bible, if that makes any sense. Like they started uncovering things like even in this book, they, this person still believes that, um, the pyramids were tombs, which we now know they are not, they were these tools of energy. And so without criticizing this person's information too much i'm just guessing that they were going off of what information they were given well, like i said before most of the information that we've been given is through men who have been taught through other men now that video it's called history of the witches part one and it's called the burn the burning season and the information that i got from this is that um, basically just being a woman made you a witch. Just being a woman. And then there's this whole manifesto. The, the guy who really coined this, his name was Kramer. And he created a manifest, a manifesto about the mal intentions of, of witches. And it's very narcissistic in the sense that even the writing is manipulated into what would be considered religious however there's fear tactics in there and then using everything from naming an animal which would be then the which is familiar right like it's pretty normal that you would name an animal but uh that would make you a witch if you had certain markings on your body, that would make you a witch. And if you didn't have those markings on your body, they would strip you and 
find something that gave evidence to you being a witch. And most of that was attributed to sleeping with the devil is also what made you a witch. And I thought, what a very busy devil. And then into witches. Oh, also gossiping or just talking to another woman would make you a witch. It's just unbelievable. And um, for me, with just critical thinking and, and logic, I've had a long suspicion that things like racism were developed out of uh, more attacking women than actual facts behind race, okay? And in this... Uh, most of the history is just women, and then you can see how it spreads into different countries. And uh, judges and lawyers got their jobs by basically being in court and coming up with all kinds of ways to condemn these women and embarrass them. And then we get things like heresy, uh, which starts with her say. Heresy is actually pronounced heresy, but it's spelled her say. Um, there's words like, uh, this is kind of on my own, astronomer, which has M-E-R at the end, and mer relates to like mermaids or Lemuria, and so I look at that as like the study of the watery sky, and then if you take the word philosopher at the end, it's her, and we start seeing like, um, they talk about the Phoenician coast, in this, which is now Palestine, or what we would call the Palestinian coast, and the word harbor was a name of a place where people would meet with boats. And so we see how harbor is now a word that we use as that same description, where the names of things are predominantly female and then it's, it's not actually accredited to any females or to any women, but there's tons of history like Bathsheba um, and the original spelling of Bathsheba was B-A-L, B-A-A-L, then Sheba, and Baal is considered a ancient deity that is supposed to be somewhat demonic and some of us may know the movie Ghostbusters where Baal is in there and also when Baal manifests, it's a badass woman basically. And um, that these names just get somewhat manipulated and switched into either something bad or not even recognized, even though in this book there's tons of pictures, like I said, of Ishtar and um, the goddess of water, the snake goddess. And at that point, they weren't considered evil. It's as if through time things became more evil, so to speak, specifically through the female. So what was another thing I wanted to mention? I, I know I'm kind of all over the place, but that's okay. <laughs> Still sometimes makes sense. Oh, that basically women were extremely knowledgeable of astronomy, of philosophy, of um, midwifery, of herbs, of that's where doctors got a lot of their information. They inquisited the female and then kept that information. And... If one whole group can decide that women in general are witches, <laughs> now I'm just always kind of making fun, like, witch, you have a name, you're a woman, witch, you have animals, you named them, witch. Anyways, I don't agree with, you know, the condemnation of women or even using the word witch to condemn women. Uh, and it did speak about how there were men who could get tried if they stuck up for said female, but men who practiced uh, witchery or warlock tactics or um, 
Mm -hmm. education really because that's really what it is magic through philosophy or herbalism were n not necessarily killed but they could be locked up for a long time and this is where we know the, the story about Socrates where he was kind of kicked out of the church so to speak and um, made to have to take his own life because he was taught by Hyperia or uh, Hypatia, who was a philosopher um, and an astronomer, and she's known for helping us know about certain stars and how the planets and the Earth are all set up. But that's not given to her, it's given to somebody else, specifically Socrates. But that's where he learned it from. He learned it from his teacher. And because he stood up for what he had learned he was considered a heretic and so even with that you can see the the same words her her critic heretic kind of in there and what you see is this repeated damnation of the feminine all the way to today I mean, all the way to today, we have people who are like, quote unquote, witch hunters. And it is in the Bible, you know, to suffer a witch. Um, uh, women aren't supposed to ask questions. It's just unbelievable. Like, and I relate this kind of to what's happening today in that when it comes to knowledge about certain things like being healthy and... Um, expressing different feelings or philosophies about what is happening that has more to do with instilling fear and when you are full of fear you're you're going through stress and stress in itself is the cause of most diseases that even like you know well I'm not gonna affirm that but where people will look outwardly as to what somebody else is doing and consider that bad rather than actually understanding that some of this is just misinformation. Not really looking into our own immune systems, uh, our own bodies, what we might be eating because dairy can literally cause all the same symptoms that one might call a virus. Um, if you're not eating well, you're not getting enough rest, you can create all kinds of symptoms. A dove. How perfect. <laughs> uh, you can create all kinds of symptoms. Not you can create, but they will create symptoms in your body. Inflammation is something that will cause different um symptoms you know so with that said i'm going to share some healing tips with you all so reiki is one of them also if you're interested in reiki please you can i have my information down below you can email me you can always leave a message on here um and i have an etsy store where you can you can send a little message through there if you're interested in a reiki session i do have it offered there also connect with me so that we can figure out times. Reiki is a great way to help um, balance energies within and connect to different levels of our lives energetically. Okay. And that can be done remotely or face to face, however you'd like to do that. Sound therapy, singing bowls, uh, your own sound singing and we know about prayer already right and then there are things like diatomaceous earth you can research that on youtube and we'll talk about what diatomaceous earth is and how it can help your body pull out toxins remove inflammation help with joint pain and those type of things massage is another one and that will help with um, removing stress in the body and just bringing that touch and you can self-massage if you're concerned about going out in the world and um, getting a massage you can do self-massage 
and calcium bentonite, which is a clay. You can bathe in it. You can, um, you can drink it. I am not a doctor. Uh, these are things that I've learned and researched. You can buy the kind that's already pre-made, but it's kind of slimy. What I do is I put mine in some water and let it sit for a little bit, stir it up, and drink a little bit of it. Um, that also helps pull out heavy metals, toxins in the body. Make sure you drink plenty of water because it can be a little dehydrating. And plenty of sun. I took pictures because literally 20 minutes ago it was completely sunny and bright. And this is where I'm convinced that they seed the sky with cloud making stuff to keep us from seeing the sun and the ring around the sun because that is a big hint to the energies that are being um, pulsed down to our planet from the sun. So get your sun, especially in the morning and the evenings. It's usually when there isn't any seeding of the sky going on. And yeah, give yourself some time to, if you can, give yourself some time to step away from social media and Wi-Fi. Turn off your Wi-Fi if you can. All right. So that's a little bit of the information for today. A little share some some of the things I've discovered. And I'll, I'll be doing more on um, the Bible, the Sybil, and some of the connections that are confusing. Oh, before I jump off. And in that book, what I've noticed is if you turn that part of Egypt and the Mediterranean, Mesopotamia, and the Middle East upside down, it looks like the United States and part of Mexico and the Gulf of Mexico, which would make sense as far as like upper and lower Egypt, right? I have my theories. It's hard to actually bridge the gap between the information that we've been really, um, the information we've been taught and the information that we're remembering. If that makes sense. All right. Well, much love to you and your families, your animals, the land around you, your critters. Thank you to all of those who are in the field helping others be well and to stay well and to educate. Uh, and thanks for being here. And again, thank you for subscribing and sharing. Yay! A hundred people. What? All right, until next time. Peace.